How you guys doing? So in the last couple videos, uh, they're nothing but just raw cutting and primarily with the BAP 300R. And this is just a regular carbide insert. What I found was, uh, especially when doing the facing operation for the drill press vise, and I think that's iron. I'm not sure exactly what material that was, but it shook the hell out of the machine. And the tubes here, well, this one here, the gantry and the gantry risers, so they're all filled with grout, so they're pretty rigid. But the rest of these tubes down here, where the vise is attached to, and the whole frame and everything, all down here too, like all these tubes, they're just hollow. So what I'm doing now is filling all of these in with grout as well. And I'm starting with the horizontal ones that go this way, that hold the machine on. So there's one in the center, and then there's it's hidden, but there's one there and one there. And you can see over here, I have a tuck tape um, closing off and capping that end. And what I plan on doing is filling these tubes uh, from the top here. So I've, I have some holes, and I'm gonna put some holes in the back here and fill the expanding grout in there. And that should expand enough to fill in the, the top, you know, how there would be like an air bubble on the top, I think that would fill all that in pretty good. So some of the holes here like that, there's my thumb for a size. So I gotta put some holes in the back there. And that means I gotta take out this whole panel, this polycarbonate panel, just so I can get access to the back here. And I'll do those first three tubes and depending on how that goes, if it works out really well, then I'll start putting holes in this uh, big rectangle that goes around. It's uh, cut this way and it's hollow so I could fill in and the grout would make it all, all the way around. So what I'm thinking of doing there is putting probably holes in the corners and then that way I can fill it in and make sure that uh, there's grout making its way all the way through. Um, this whole platform is all very level so I shouldn't have anything to worry about with grout uh, seeping to one side or another. For uh, doing this big rectangle here, uh, I was thinking originally putting holes in the corners, but I think I, what I might do instead is put a big square here, cut a big square out, and then that way I can get access by drilling uh, in and, and then getting this column here. And because otherwise these columns, there's, it's not, it's not really easy for me to fill them up. Like I could put a hole in the top here and do that, but you know. It'd be, be nicer if I could just do it in one go and then I could work on pouring the uh, grout in each column up to the tube here and then I could use those same holes to fill in the rest of this tube. Afterwards I could just uh, close that rectangle or uh, close that hole with uh, just welding a piece of plate on there. After I'm done with these holes here what I'll probably do is make some little circles and and steel and then put them in there and just cap them off, just weld them. That way I don't have to worry about um, coolant and, and other kinds of things getting into the tubes and causing issues in the future. So I'm not sure how much I'll record of this. Uh, probably some updates as, as I go and if anything interesting or you know drastic happens then I will edit that in. The main reason for filling all the tubes in would be twofold, just to make it uh, just add more mass and that would counteract the motion of the gantry moving. In this direction it's quite a lot. It's enough to bend and make the frame and everything wobble. I currently have the gantry y-axis acceleration at one meter squared and that's half of what I have on the x-axis here. This one I have it at two and then I'm not sure what I have it at on the z. The z doesn't weigh anything so it can go really fast. And then second is just to calm down all the vibrations and all that, especially at certain RPMs, the whole machine will resonate. And that causes a lot of problems, especially with the, the BAP tool where it's like that thing just channels so much vibration into the base. And I think it's, it's doubling that because the top here is, is uh, much more rigid now. So anything that's going to move is now happening on the on the floor on the side here. So filling in all this stuff and making it 
much more rigid, just like the gantry should help with that. All right, so I've filled in this one here and uh, the holes I made are not big enough at all. So I'm gonna have to use some bigger ones. So, so this center tube here is all full and this is kind of pudging out a bit, but it's the uh, tuck tape seems to be holding. And on the inside here, I started on the back over there and that one's filled in, but it's, uh, I ran out of grout. So it's kind of like, it's, it's high on that end, but it's lower here because it's kind of sloping down as it kind of hardens. It looks like from what I can tell looking through there, it looks like it's probably half the height there. So I'm going to have to fill that in. And I might also drill a hole in the center uh, just to help with relieving some of the air and just to check as well, see if, see if the grout uh, made it all the way to the uh, center. I've yet to do this tube here. What I think I'll do is I'm going to leave that hole the same size as the other ones just because it looks visually nicer that way. I'm going to expand that one out there, make it a lot bigger and do the majority of the pour from there and then top it off over here at the end. Here's how the tuck tape looks. Like it's got, it's pudged out a little bit, but yeah, it's pulling pretty good. I've got another 25 kilogram bag, so this might be enough to do the third tube plus half of the, the remainder of the other tube. And then uh, possibly it might be enough to do the main perimeter. And by main perimeter, I mean this one here that goes all the way around the machine. All right, so it's the second day. I let the grout in this tube uh, dry. I ran out of uh, the bag of grout I was using for this one, so not that one, this one here. So I uh, filled it halfway and then I uh, filled the rest of it this morning and I think it worked out pretty good as well. The main issue I had yesterday with this was the holes were too small and my funnel was too small as well. So it took forever for the grout to get into the tubes and by then it was already starting to solidify and it was causing, you know, it's not flowing anymore so it's going to cause a lot of problems. Here's what the side looks like after taking the tape off and it's, yeah, it's nice and smooth. And so definitely on this size of beam, this is a two by three inch. Uh, this tuck tape works really well. I would definitely clean the, the sides of it with acetone, get rid of all the grease and oils and stuff off. And then this stuff is strong enough to hold it. It does bulge out a bit. It, like there is a lot of weight in the grout pushing against it, but this stuff holds really well. I grabbed some more grout and I also grabbed a nice big funnel. And this one I drilled at the bottom and then also ground it just to get as much inner diameter as possible. This is what I was using yesterday, some little kit's funnel. And this, obviously, like if we compare them, you know, this one, this one is way too slow. This one is perfect. Okay, the bigger funnel worked a lot better. Uh, too much actually, because when I was doing this side here, it's probably, yep, yeah, it's already exploding. Uh, pouring that side in, I was overflowing on this side, so that's good. So this whole this whole beam here is totally filled, and this one I think is good now too, because it was overflowing as well. So this morning I uh, filled in this one, the rest of it. Uh, previously yesterday I filled in half of it and it was slowing, so it it went on an angle, and uh, today I filled in the rest with the big funnel and uh, fill it all the way up and, and now like the because of how quickly this goes in the expanding grout has enough time to do its thing and expand inside the tube so I did get a de decent amount of grout coming out that hole. Unfortunately be, just because of the angle I wasn't able to drill in a relief hole here otherwise I would have so it's possible there might be some air bubble stuck in the middle there. Uh, it, for this one, it's just there's no way I'd be able to drill a small little hole on the side of there. I could probably like Dremel one out, but I decided not to in the end. This tube here worked out really well. I filled in from this side and I put uh, a lot in with the large funnel, and then I went in the back here just in case the like the viscosity or just the mix was too watery as it flowed that way. I put some in on this side as well. And uh, I wasn't expecting it, but as I'm pouring it in here, eventually it starts going slowly. And then I realized that this is just flowing outwards. So, so this whole tube flowed all the way enough and, and it stayed flowy enough that as I'm pouring this in, it was uh, being forced out that side. So this tube is 
completely filled in. And then after the last half an hour, it's been slowly kind of expanding outwards on both sides. So I've been having to clear that off. As you'll see over here, I put in a giant hole there and I also put one in here. And I'm going to do these tubes next. I've taken out the wiring for the Y servos and the limit switches. So on both sides, so there's nothing in that tube and I'm just prepping this to do it. So I'm gonna take this servo mount off and same with the other one and use the tuck tape like I did before and cap the ends and then do the same thing, fill it in. I'm not gonna worry about any of the bolts in here getting grout on them. Uh, but when I did the gantry, I used some grease on the bolts, but I, I don't even think it makes a difference. Like that, those came out like very easy. I can't imagine the grout is gonna be locking onto the bolts so hard that they're gonna be stuck in there. So I'm just not gonna worry about it. I put some relief holes right here. This is on the uh, Y axis. And this way when the grout's going in, the air is gonna have a place to go. I have a hole on the other side as well. All right, so I finished putting grout in the Y axis now. And uh, I took the motor mounts off and everything. And yeah, you added uh, the relief holes there. So this went up pretty well. The uh, relief holes, I get some grout coming out the side there. And uh, yeah, everything worked out pretty good. Same with the other side over there. And uh, now what's left is the one, two, three tubes. These ones are gonna be a challenge because they're holding bolts that go upwards into the Y axis. So I'm gonna to have to put some caps that go inwards. I can't just use the tape method, even though the tape method works really well. So I'll have to plan around that and figure out how I'm gonna do that. Um, I'll probably use some uh, wood with some like hot glue just to seal it in there. So this left side turned out well. It uh, went all the way up to the top. This right side on the other hand, it uh, developed a gap on the top here on the very end. And if we look from the top, like it did fill up all the way to the top here. So this might have been like an air pocket that just couldn't, there was no way for it to exit out. The left side back turned out well as well, you can see. I'll check out that side and see how that one looks. That one has the gap on the front. This side I had some uh, holes where I had the original uh, cable chain. This one here. So I had this thing on the bottom. So these, uh, I had to cap these holes. So the right side uh, back here looks good as well. It's kind of unfortunate that the front over there had the uh, gap on the top. I think in the future probably the best way to deal with this is to get a needle or something and poke some holes on the very top of the tape. That way you have a place for the air to go. Otherwise, you could have a case where like the, the air has nowhere to go and you're left with just something like that. I might see if I can fill this in somehow because it's kind of an eyesore looking at that. Here's how the one on the bottom looks like after drying for maybe two days. So you can see the color is vastly different compared to these. So these will dry up as well. The surface of this is nice and smooth. And same with this, this is a bit rougher though. So it'll probably roughen up. This one's even smoother for some reason. It has a very nice smooth finish on it. Here's a sound test with a screwdriver. You can hear what everything sounds like. So this one's solid. And the gantry. Side tube here. And then this one down here is full as well. 
This one I'm picking up a lot of echo because the surrounding tubes are hollow. So this one and then this one here is hollow. Very different sounding. This is the one in the middle. This one has less echo than this one. And then this is the uh, empty tube again. And then here's the outer frame which is empty as well. So it definitely makes a big difference with the sound. The gantry, even though the gantry is hollow, it's, it's got a very nice sound to it. But it has two steel tubes on the inside of it. So maybe that, maybe the conjunction of the composite of it is helping that somehow. It could also be that there's just, there's nothing hollow surrounding it, like everything like the gantry is connected to these and, and like these are filled and then the one down here is filled. I have a feeling that once I fill this one in, the tinging sound is gonna be mostly gone from the whole machine. So I have 50 kilograms left of uh, grout to pour in and uh, that should be enough for at least these tubes here, the three of them. And I'm also going to be drilling in some holes in here and then filling this perimeter, which is goes around the whole machine. So that should add a, a lot of mass and damping properties to everything just because it surrounds the whole machine. The legs down here, I might fill these in, but like that's they're three by three, so and they're tall, so they're going to use a ton of grout. So I'm going to see how. Uh, filling this in sounds first, and then I may or may not fill these in. Likely I will though. Trying to decide what I'm going to do with uh, the holes like this, and uh, especially the side here, and lots of other little small holes. Uh, I might clean all this up and then put epoxy on this to seal it, and then that way no chance of moisture is going to find their way into the holes. And while I'm at it, like this small little gap here, that should help with that problem as well. You could just fill that in and then that's not a problem anymore. And then, uh, yeah, some kind of, probably a little skim of epoxy on the top here and then I'll just use paint to, you know, clean it all up and make it look nice. For the frame itself, I haven't painted this yet. So I'll probably, once I do the epoxy, I'll put some epoxy on these and just leave it for now until I'm ready to, paint the entire frame. I think what I'm going to do for now is uh, get the machine back together, put the motors back on. I'll uh, make some wood caps that I can slide into here and uh, prep this for filling these in. But I won't do it yet because i got to figure out what I'm going to do with this vise. Um, I'm thinking of putting in two tubes here, weld them in and weld them to the uh, base of this machine. So now those two uh, tubes will be attached. Not ideal, but I'm fine with that. I can always I can always cut them off after if I need to disassemble everything. And uh, yeah, on the on the top here, when I eventually put in a spoil board, yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to fasten that down. I don't really like how thin this is anyway in the first place for putting a spoil board down. So I could weld in some bolts on top and then machine them down. So all the bolts on the surface here are all at the same height for in relation to the, the X and Y of the machine. But yeah, I'd like to get you guys' opinions on what I should do with this. Uh, I'll hold off on filling it because once I fill it in, it's going to be a real pain in the ass to put bolts into this. So you know, I'd rather have a plan uh, before I even start on that. So I'll end it here and I will see you guys next time.